I'm Charlotte and today we're going to do a Christmas table centrepiece with materials that you can find at home along with flowers and foliage that you can source at your local florist. In front of me I've got a variety of flowers that are Christmassy in tones but not traditional Christmas colours because I like to add in a little bit of the, the darker pinks in with my burgundy reds along with some typical Christmas foliages and materials. At home, you should have hopefully some sellotape or if you're lucky enough, some pop tape. This is what we're gonna to use to make a grid form in front of a vase or a container that you perhaps have at home that you can just readily use for your Christmas table centerpiece. First of all, we're gonna just fill our container vase with cold water. So obviously flowers like to have cold water, not warm water. To be sustainable, we're gonna move away from floor foam and use a grid technique which everyone can do at home just with some sellotape or some pop tape. Once we've filled our vase or container with water we're then going to take our tape and make a nice grid formation across the top. Here we go, popping the tape across the top and cut in and then just stick in the tape to either side. So we don't want to go too far down the vase or container because it will look ugly, just, just around the lid. We we'll start with a few pieces across the top, so you leave a negative space in between. So you can see that this is starting to form a few lines. And then once we've gone this way, we can then crisscross. Okay. Once we've gone one way, and then we'll go the other way, starting in the middle. Put the tape over the top, gently press them down. And again, kind of just bring the tape slightly wider this time. I'm not going to do quite as many. And one the other side. And you've formed a checkered design, which then leaves holes ready for our flowers and villages to insert into. The flowers that I've chosen to use in this Christmas table centrepiece are a nice classic um, style with a modern twist to it. So I've gone for the nice rich tones of the burgundies along with the nice darker kind of plum pinky colours. Flowers and foliage that I've chosen, I've tried to go for things that are more longer lasting, especially when your homes are a lot warmer at Christmas time. It's always good to have something that's going to last you through the Christmas week. Let's jump straight in and make our Christmas design. Um, I'm going to be making everything all rounded, so we don't want it to be front facing because most people's Christmas tables are round or rectangular, so you'd like to have flowers shown to everybody sat around the table. Let's begin with our foliages. I've got this beautiful conifer, um, which we're going to pop in. Cutting the stems at an angle. We do this just because it increases the stem surface, then it's got more area to take up water once it's sat in your container which then helps with longevity and keeping the flowers and foliages fresh and again we're going to just take off the bottom leaves so we've got a nice clear stem when we pop it into the vase one it helps us get the stem clearly into the grid work so that it goes nice and easy in but two it keeps the stem nice and clear when it's in the water so we're not adding bacteria to the water we're going to cut and strip as we go Again, the same with the eucalyptus. Just pop it in where you feel you fancy the look of it. If you look at it and think, oh, actually, I don't quite like that there, take it back out, pop it in somewhere else, it doesn't matter. So there's no rule of thumb where you have to start on the outside edge and then work your way in or start from the in and work out. I tend to work freely and as you just go for it, really. Um, again, everything that I've got on the table. I can get down my local florist. This is a brilliant activity to do, whether you do it with the kids, whether you do it with your family, girlfriends, just all get around, have a go. Maybe if you've got a big Christmas table, you can all do one each and have loads of them down the middle, loads of candles, everybody can get involved and you can look at a Christmas tradition. You find with certain foliages, like the conifer, it just has that beautiful, natural, curvature to it that just wants to naturally fall out and flop everywhere. As you're building building up layer upon layer you'll find that the stems will start to then interlock which then creates a different grid with underneath your tape grid so it gives it a bit more stability. So you might find your, few, your first few stems 
a little bit loosey goosey, but once you start getting everything in, it starts to firm up and tighten up. So you'll find it a lot easier as you go. Basically, don't be afraid, just jump straight in, have a bit of fun. That's what it's all about, especially at Christmas. Okay, so you can see it's starting to take shape. Now, at this point, it's often good to just stand back, have a look, make sure that it's not all one sided. So you can see here we've got a, a natural bit of gap, so we can fill that in with a little bit of foliage. And being quite conscious as well not to have anything too tall, because obviously when you're at a dining room table, your Christmas table centrepiece doesn't want to be obstructing the person across from you, because obviously Christmas is about getting together, talking, sharing, laughing, and all that kind of stuff. So you've got to be a little bit aware of where your flowers and foliage are going. It's not so bad if you've got something very thin and wispy, but if you've got a massive piece of foliage right bang in the middle, it's going to obscure. So just be a little bit mindful of where you're placing the material. We'll add in some of this beautiful skimmia, which has got this beautiful cranberry red. Again, it's a brilliant, long lasting flower and it's got that lovely colour. Again, making sure you're cutting your stems at an angle so it can take up as much water once it's in that container as possible. And then we've got this beautiful wax flower, which is in this gorgeous dark cerise, which I think has got a nice twist to the classic look of like reds and greens. It just makes those reds pop even more. And again, it's a brilliant long lasting flower. Making sure to take any little bits of foliage off the bottom so you've got a nice clear stem. You can really see how our Christmas table centrepiece is really coming together and taking shape. It's got, starts to take its nice form. Don't be afraid to pop a little bit of foliage down in low. Everything doesn't have to be all exactly the same level. It's good to have a bit of light and shade so that flowers can just stand above your foliage so it kind of sets them apart. Let's add in a bit of this beautiful Lysianthus, again in this uh, nice dark cerise. You'll find as well as you're going along, you have to really look for the holes. <laughs> so they're all starting to get filled up. Again, cutting your stems at an angle. There's no typical pattern that I tend to follow. If you had a more focal flower, like roses, for instance, you could pop those in first. Um, but I like to just work as I go, because I find if I do a little bit of smaller flowers, then it creates like an opening where I can then put a slightly bigger focal flower, um, and then you can just start to fill in around it. The main key, I, I think, is just making sure that each flower kind of has its own separate space that it can shine brightly. We'll add in some carnations. Again, really good flower that lasts so long, especially over the Christmas period when you have your house nice and warm. And if you have it in this nice burgundy colour, it just offsets the, the pink and the burgundy from the skin beautifully. A good little tip as well with carnation, if you buy them in tight, which I would suggest doing, they'll see a lot more clothes, so they don't look as aesthetically pleasing when they're in the arrangements. If you wanted to encourage them to open up a little bit quicker, just gently rub your fingers around the petals. You won't do any damage, as long as you don't bash it, but gently rub them and that will just encourage the petals to open a bit quicker. So I've gone for two carnations as my two focal, rather than three, just because I like to have one slightly higher than the other, which gives it this slightly more modern look and contemporary look to the piece. And then we have a little bit more of this beautiful Lysianthus, again, taking off any lower leaves that might obstruct or get in the way. pieces down the lower outside levels just so that everybody around the table will have a good view of all the flowers. You find like a piece of Lysianthus 
will go quite a long way. It's got quite a few long different breaks. You can cut it up into multiple pieces so rather than just having one piece of Lysianthus in its entirety, cut it up into sections and you can get three, four, possibly six pieces out of one stem. Having a Christmas table centerpiece really brings that sense of fun, freshness, scent that just brings, I think, this and brings your Christmas table alive. I think this, the one thing that everyone should have <laughs> is just, it's just that focal point for the whole family and it sets your table up beautiful for the rest of the day. Nothing beats the, the smell of fresh flowers, I don't think. Okay, so our wax, wax flowers in, our lisianthus is in. We can then recess if we need any more foliage. We've got a little bit of eucalyptus left, which will be nice, just feathered around the outside edges. And if you see any gaps, then again, you can use your foliage just to hide some of the gaps. You don't ideally want to see any of the tape that we use for the mechanics. All you want to see is your beautiful Christmas table centerpiece. And then we've got this beautiful red rose hip berry, which I'm going to have in its entirety just popping out to one side. Again, cutting the stem at an angle, remove any thorns that it might have, and then pop them in. In there, and again, these are really good good flowers to, to last a good long life. Okay, and then we're going to add in these beautiful dried lotus heads that are already on sticks. Again, you can pick them up from your local florist. If you do want to go down the eco-friendly route and you want to add in a couple of baubles that, that matched up to your own table decor, that's perfectly fine, but I've got a nice natural look. So one in this side. I'm going to step back, reassess, and think mm, that one's a little bit too long, like where he was, but it's just shorter than a little bit. Because all I want to see is the lotus head and not the stick, ideally. Have a little turn of your piece to make sure that all the way around there's interest for everybody to have a little look at and there you go that's one christmas table centerpiece all done ready for christmas day